Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. We are sticking with a golden super adventure book. And who's it about? The Princess of Power. This one is entitled Glimmer of Hope. Written by Teddy Slater. Illustrated by Fred Carrillo. And I learned from the last one. Cover art by Fernando Fernandez. Same person or different person? Different person. Hmm. Yeah, the styles look different. And I told you they were leggings. Look how shiny those things are. <laughs> He's talking about glimmer, folks. Also notice that the story is called A Glimmer of Hope. Yes, yes. Puns were around back in the 80s, too. <laughs> A full Aetherian moon still glowed in the sky when Princess Adora... Asleep in Crystal Castle, was awakened by the clippity-clop of hoofbeats. She dashed to her window and looked outside. Wow, there is a lot of detail. Look at that. It's a full spread on both pages. Mm -hmm. oh, that's technically what a full spread is called. Just, wow, there's also a lot of colors and stuff like this. It seems a lot more detailed than the previous book. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one occurred after... I didn't pre-look at these and choose by dates because I knew the Sword of Shira had to be first and the other three I remember really well, so. Mm -hmm. But this is very detailed and I could have sworn that Princess Adora isn't really known as a princess on Etheria because she's a princess on Eternia. And I could have sworn that as one of the rebel leaders, she was always at the hideout in the Whispering Woods. Hmm. So, not 100% on that, but just mm. throwing it out there. Also, it's a very nice image, too. Posing's actually really good as well. She's definitely heard something. Mm-hmm. And is looking out her window. It's a very detailed gown. So, nightgown and actually, I think, robe. There, just outside was the royal guard of Bright Moon. Why, it's Queen Angela, Adora said to herself. I wonder what she's doing here at this hour. I do hope nothing is wrong. Wait a minute. Crystal Castle? This looks a lot like the... Okay, when I think I got this from somebody after their family had a yard sale, and... Two, isn't that the hidden castle in the clouds that nobody's supposed to know where it is? <laughs> I don't know. I watched the series a lot when I was younger, but I don't remember the series that much. Uh, there was a whole episode about how she finds the hidden castle, and nobody's supposed to know where it is. Hmm. Also, the design between the queen here and the queen in, in the first book is different. She's got the wings and everything, but the outfit, the way her hair is cut... It's the same outfit, it's just rendered differently. Like, second to last page. Notice how that part's different, too? And she has shorter hair in this? I know she has it back, but I think the hair's also shorter. That's the only page she's on. No, there's one other page. Oh, yeah, the page. When Glimmer explains that her mother was taken away. Yeah. Hmm. That's more show accurate. Mm, I think that's what really made the difference between the first book we read and this book. They made it so her hair is more down in the version we're reading right now. Thank you. Remember, be kind and rewind. I mean, say thank you and please. Adora ran downstairs and flung open the castle door. Oh, Adora! Queen Angela cried. My daughter, Glimmer, has been kidnapped by Catra. She's being held prisoner on Beast Island and I fear for her safety. Look at this ransom note I just received. Weren't we just at Beast Island? I know, right? Last book, Impenetrable, the Queen was there. All right, so we, ha we have a... An arrow pointing down at the note, since we can't actually see the note in this shot. And it says, Surrender bright moon, or Glimmer's light will shine no more. Nice dialogue. The posing seems a little awkward from the Queen, but I get what they were going for. And now, seeing her costume from the front, how do you compare that to what's shown in The Sword of She-Ra? Well, 
One, in the shorter shira, it looks like they mean the top where the shoulders are is supposed to be a different part of the outfit, a separate piece of cloth. But in the current rendering, it's all one piece of cloth. It's mainly that it's all one shade. In this one, the top shoulder piece is a darker pink and the body is a lighter pink with the belt accent. Here, we only have the darker pink and the belt accent. They kept the shoulder in the lighter color, but they still kept the jewel and the white along the front. Yeah, but if you also look, I can't quite show it there, but I think it's more of a solid piece from here to here, comparatively. It's technically a solid piece. I can't give up my land, Angela wailed. As a queen, I have a duty to my people, but I'm a mother too. Surely I can't give up my daughter. You must help me, Adora. I don't know if I can. Adora said sadly. But I'm sure Shira would know what to do. Rest here while I try to find her. <laughs> the classic. I don't think I can do it, but if you give me a moment, I can call my friend the hero, O-Wink, and they'll be here in a moment, O-Wink. <laughs> as soon as the castle door closed behind her, Adora headed for the stable. With her horse spirit by her side, she raised the sword of protection. For the honor of Grayskull, I am Shira. And he's just standing over going, oh, here we go again. And the art's gotten a little bit simplistic because they are not coloring in the lips. It's just a plain color for the face in this shot. Also, over here, you can see that they did do the coloring on the lips but it's a little kind of outside the lines. Yeah, it really contrasts from the opening spread. Mm -hmm. I mean, even to the next page, it's much better on the next page. Instantly, Adora was transformed into Shira, princess of power, and spirit became the winged unicorn Swift Wind. As the new morning dawned, they flew off to Beast Island in search of double trouble, Angela's secret agent. Shira didn't have quite as many characters as He-Man because, you know, action figures were always more of a boy thing. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to go over the art a little bit on that page before we move on. Mm -hmm. Much better than the previous page, specifically in the face, though they did still use one color for the face. Something about the way they've written the line work makes it work better. It doesn't feel as, wow, they didn't color in some spots. That looks odd. Mm. Though it does look like they may have, yep, they miscolored part of her helmet or her, um, headpiece. Cowl? Not cowl, um, but yeah, headpiece. Headdress. They actually colored it the color of her hair. If you look closely, that's supposed to be the same color there. Are we even going to touch on the most glaring detail? Okay. We might want to pull a quick Google, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure that Swift Wind is white. Who is this, Hasbro? Huh. Yeah, continuing reasons that She-Ra got more advantages than He-Man. Her epic mount changes color. Because Spirit is pink. And Swift Wind is white. Huh. The situation is dark indeed, Double Trouble told She-Ra. Not only has Catra kidnapped Glimmer, but she's locked her in a pitch black dungeon. Glimmer's staff has already run out of power, and there's not a ray of light in that cell to recharge it. Worse yet, the dungeon is surrounded by a fence with a powerful force field, so no one can get in to rescue her. Where was that when they were holding the queen? That's a better prize. I'm guessing that this is a new addition? After they managed to break the queen out? Yeah. Also, why would the villains leave the captive with a weapon? And uh, it's an 80s cartoon? Wow. And speaking of detail... It's that detailed again. I guess it's because they don't have much of a background going on. So they spent most of their time working on rendering the characters. When Shira brought the bad news back to Angela, she found that the worried queen had already called a town meeting. All the citizens of Bright Moon were gathered near Crystal Castle, and they all wanted to help. The trouble was, 
No one knew quite what to do. Is he yellow? Cowl? No. He's yellow. I moved it in the last book they got it wrong. He was yellow in the last one. No, he was mostly pink. No, he was not. Hmm. Yeah, he's closer in this one because he has a lot of brown. Hmm, so, yeah, wrong color for that character. They seem to be getting most of the other characters right because I don't see any real problems with these guys up in front. Yeah. Maybe it's that color budget I mentioned before that they may be running into? Mm-hmm. Also, that looks more like Castle Brightmoon, not Crystal Castle. Didn't she say a town hall, a town meeting or something like that? So it would make sense for it to be out in front of there. Yeah, but they said gathered near Crystal Castle. Hmm. Which is that one. Hmm. That's Castle Brightmoon. Hmm. The details seem to really come out when they have mid-body shots of most people or full-body shots. I should say waist-up shots is when they really put a lot of detail into the faces and coloring, but if they do a full body shot, unless it's a single person, they seem to, like, fail on some of the details. Or at least being consistent about it. Yeah. And for the record, I haven't watched she at all in the past three years, so all of my nitpicks are pretty much from memory. Whoa! Broom and I will fly over the force field. Madam Raz offered, but she explained that the force field reached into the sky and prevented anyone from landing. Hmm, nice illustration there of the force field, which isn't really how a force field works, but it should be more like a magic field or a um, field that will shock you because a force field is just a barrier. Think of it as an invisible wall that you hit compared to something that will reach out and grab you. Then Cowl spoke up. We can't go over. We're all agreed. Another way in is what we need. I've thought and thought and can't help but wonder. Why don't Bo and I just dig our way under? Did he rhyme in the show? I'm trying to remember. Also, that's definitely off color for him. Incredibly off color. He's a lots of blues and pinks and yellows now. With brown paws. Mm-hmm. And Bo is rendered perfectly. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with him. And of course, the, once again, the force field is world zap. But she told him that the electrical charge flowed down into the ground as well. Uh-oh, we're halfway through. This is where we find out who actually killed the people. I mean... One of the townspeople came up with the idea of going through the fence with a giant battering ram. But she pointed out that as soon as the force field was touched, a giant explosion would destroy their weapon. Hmm. Yep. Very nicely illustrated with lots of that green electricity in the previous shots, and everyone being blown away in kind of awkward poses. Yeah. Some of them look like, but others will look like, yeah, I'm just going to lay on my back and put my arms up like this and you can draw me. Well, I think those two were having a very hard time because it looks like their pants got knocked clean off. <laughs> Actually, it kind of does look like that because there's something over in the corner that I'm pretty sure is supposed to be a rock, but it very well looks like pants. Yeah, a lot of the rocks and branches kind of look like clothing. Mm-hmm. Everyone else kept suggesting bigger and better ways to get past the Force. The Force? What is it, Star Wars now? But as the first stars began twinkling in the sky, Shira had quite a different idea. The glitterbugs can do it, she cried suddenly. Those little things? Angela scoffed. What good are they? Why, until the moon comes out, they have no power at all. And even then, it would take about a million of them to give as much light as one candle. Interesting. And you can kind of see some, I'm guessing what's meant to be stars there, or it's damage to the book. No, it feels like that's uh, printing. Stars. And once again, since there's minimal stuff going on, all the detail went to the people. Yeah, the way the bushes slash trees are done in the background. The shape of them kind of reminds me of truffula trees from the Lorax, but they're all green. Also, 
it's just it also looks like they're using kind of like pre-bought or pre-gotten references for the people and stuff like that like some of the poses don't quite work but other poses work perfectly fine together but by the time Shira finished explaining her idea Angela was willing to admit that maybe bigger wasn't always better oh there's our lesson as the moon rose Shira sent out a silent message to the glitter bugs not how her power works. Within minutes, thousands of the tiny creatures had flown to her side. When they heard about Angela's problem, the glitter bugs responded with a message of their own. Imagine finding Nemo, the fish. They all got together and they spelled the words, we want to help. Yes. And so that's an awful lot of them because the queen said it takes like a thousand of them to create as much light as one candle. This is like a billboard up in the sky. Mm -hmm. As the moon rose higher and higher, the glitter bugs took on more and more of its light. Soon they were all aglow and ready to carry out Shira's plan. Off to Beast Island flew the little bits of living light. If they had to fly all the way to Beast Island, why wait for the moon to rise? They had no trouble at all slipping through the tiny holes in the force fence and the even tinier ones between the stones of Glimmer's dungeon. Hmm. So they're there to, like, recharge her wand or something. Before long, all the glitter bugs were inside Glimmer's cell. They flew once around the darkened room, then gathered in the center to form a great ball of light. Glitter bugs! You've come to rescue me! How does she know what the plan is? Yeah. Also, wouldn't it be like, you've come here to make it so I can rescue myself? Because isn't that kind of the plan? Yeah, because they can't get her out the way they got in. By morning, Glimmer had absorbed enough of the Glitterbug's light to recharge her staff. Just before the crack of dawn, Catra's jailer came to bring her breakfast. Glimmer stunned him with a blast of light and fled from her cell. Ouch. Just the look on his face like, gah! Captures it nicely, but she looks so surprised. Like, oh, I just stunned him. I'm sorry. Here, here's, here's five bucks. Get, fix, fix yourself. Thanks to the glitter bugs, Glimmer still had enough power to short circuit the force field. Okay, it, couldn't another magic user have done that? You would think. Maybe it's more vulnerable on the inside. Hmm. Also, if it's morning, why are the glitter bugs still so bright? Yeah. Once again, she raised her staff. The fence exploded in a shower of sparks. Glimmer could hardly believe her eyes when the sparks finally settled and she saw who was waiting for her. Oh, Shira! she cried, giving her friend a big hug. I knew you'd save me. How can I ever thank you? Don't thank me, Shira replied. Thank the glitter bugs. Without them, you'd still be in Catra's dungeon. Hmm. And is it just me or does the face look a little off like she's looking at the camera instead of her friend oh yeah like hi i just saved this person look at your friend look back at me look at your friend look back at me sadly um. <laughs> <laughs> your friend is not me <laughs> but they could cosplay like and me, me. <laughs> as swift wind took wing and carried she and glimmer back to bright moon the sun slowly rose in the morning sky and just as slowly the glitter bugs faded from view Okay, I guess it wasn't quite sunrise yet, so they still had some light. So now we know why we could see them in the other pictures. Hmm. And once again, when they're doing a more outward shot like this, the faces kind of lose some of the detail. But this is another example of it's better here than it was in that one shot. The face looked so off. Yeah, but it looks like they didn't do any line work of the edge of Glimmer's face against she hair. Yeah, they mostly relied on the, they mostly relied on the color to give you that detail, mm -hmm. which they're getting wrong. Glimmer's colors are okay. It's Swift Wind that is incredibly wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking it's more because of color budget, like how many colors they could actually have on a page to keep it within a reasonable price. Yeah, but the paper is white. I was also talking about going back to Cal. Okay. But they already used brown, so why couldn't they just use more brown? 
Maybe each color is more expensive than the other. That night, when the moon was at its brightest, Princess Adora invited everyone to a party at Crystal Castle. No! 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 <laughs> I love your reaction. No! No! I'm, I'm going to have to Google this afterwards. Because I'm real... Or am I totally getting a... Crystal Castle and Castle Bright Moon are two different things. But it... I am getting it wrong. Crystal Castle and Castle Bright Moon are two different castles. The one I'm thinking of doesn't look like this, but it is still pink. Yeah. Well, they've gotten colors wrong before, so who says what the castle actually looks like? So please continue reading, because that was just... <laughs> no! Nope! 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 No! 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 Yeah, because I was thinking of a different castle. They're all pink, excuse me. <laughs> The guests of honor were thousands of happy glitter bugs, but no one could have been happier than Queen Angela and Glimmer, who took the opportunity to give their biggest thanks to their littlest friends. Yay! Who are once again doing their neon light trick and saying, welcome home, Glimmer. Yeah, and once again, nice details, except just something about that face of the queen and the face of Adora look kind of awkward. awkward like they forgot how the bottom jaw worked and they're kind of ah. yeah it looks a little bit like they got an extra cleft chin or something mm -hmm. also you can see side by side now how similar mother and daughter's outfits are mm -hmm. like only like color difference in the waistband yeah I, well, maybe that's one of the reasons they did red for the upper part in the other ones to make her seem more different than her daughter. So, what did you think? Well, this one had a lesson. The other one did not. The other one was, okay, we need to summarize the pilot and we have less than half the number of pages as the script. What can we do? <laughs> and this one was more standard children's fare with we have a short story with a message. Mm. It's interesting how it's both accurate and inaccurate because a lot of the colors are wrong. And I want to say Castle Bright Moon is more silver. Though I want to say the Crystal Castle is definitely pink. Okay, so quick image search. The castle that I was incorrectly getting mixed up with Crystal Castle is the one that has the jewel in the center. That is the hidden castle. And there's actually a shot of the toy crystal castle, which is different from Castle Bright Moon, which is actually more gold. Hmm. So yes, Crystal Castle was accurate. I'm still not sure other than marketing why she had Crystal Castle, because Adora leads the rebels, and the rebels are always in the Whispering Woods. Is it Whispering Woods or Wandering Woods? Hmm. And it doesn't quite feel like an episode. You know, sometimes when you read something that's taken from a broadcast show, it can read as though it's an episode. This one didn't really feel like that. Hmm. Well... She only got to use one of her powers, her ability to communicate with animals. No healing, no transforming the sword into something else, no shooting energy bolts, no using her super strength. Well, she didn't need much. No, I'm just saying those tend to be the hallmarks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not as bad as He-Man, where in every episode he punches the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and does things... Those camera guys like fly through the air to grab an asteroid <laughs> it, it was just a jump but it looked like he was flying through the air to grab this asteroid and punch it like i said i think she kind of has despite all of the pinkness and the retcon and everything i think she got the better end of the deal and this has been princess of power glimmer of hope written by teddy slater illustrated by fred carrillo with cover art by Fernando Fernandez. 
kind of funny how if you look at the back of this one and the back of the other one, they share each other's. See? Yeah, the back covers are almost identical in terms of what books are listed and what images are shown. Both of them show the Sword of She-Ra and Glimmer of Hope, even though one of them is the Sword of She-Ra and the other one is Glimmer of Hope. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they were meant to be bad as a set or something. Well, it looks at this point like they only had those two She-Ra books because all of these here are Masters of the Universe mm. and then GoBots. Oh, GoBots. The inferior version of Transformers. I was going to say the poor man's version. But I still liked it. Yeah, because down here is the only place where they mention books that are not one of these two. And these are from a hardcover series. Hmm. Golden Heroic Champions, The Folly of Catra, The Silent Storm, Too Long at the Fair, and Trouble with Devils. None of which I have. No, I'm not asking for them. Yes, fans out there. It's okay. If you want to help us, go over to the Patreon, Coffee, or see if you can't get the book. If not, there's a link to Amazon directly where anything you buy will help us. <laughs> also, the Ebates link, you get a welcome bonus, I get a referral bonus, and you earn cash back at all the stores you go to. And yes, we're still going to do the, ma the standard outro. <laughs> I wasn't going to. Oh, in that case, Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis. Lux Analysis. That's correct, yeah. Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>